tech because there was no other way to be a tech lawyer. I ended up getting one of those job offers that you think they're going to refuse. Autonomy, six figures, pioneering, working with the elite people. I knew it was a trap that I'd set for myself. So I delayed saying yes. Despite the pressures from family who reasoned with me that no sane person would turn down an opportunity like this. So finally, one morning, when I was home alone, I picked up the phone and I said yes. And then for some weird reason, I walked over to the far side of the bed and I crouched down on the floor and I started crying. Uh, and that part isn't what's surprising, but it's kind of weird that I went and hit because, like I said, I was home all the time. There was no one to see. It was an indication. So I laid down on the floor and cried. But what happened next was almost indescribable. I began to hear this sound, and it was faint at first, but it, it got louder and, and louder. It was sort of like a wave. I remember consciously willing myself to be quiet while I cried so that I could try and figure out what the sound was in my house because it was home alone. Although I've never actually heard someone scream, it sounds what I imagine some of these being pain. Have you ever heard of peening? It's Gaelic, it's the old Irish. Uh, peening is a form of vocal lament associated. So imagine my surprise when I realized that sound was coming from me because I couldn't feel myself making the sound. I was keening because I was in mourning over the career choice I felt I had to make, mourning the peace of my soul that felt it was being hopelessly lost in this choice, mourning over the perceived desperation <coughs> and utter hopelessness of my situation. And I know, I know this sound ridiculous way too emotional, right? Well, maybe. But maybe not. Maybe the problem wasn't that I was too emotional in this situation. I've spent 12 years working with people on their career. Really, probably thousands of people at this point I've talked to. And I think the problem is more that enough people aren't emotional about their careers. I think we all need to get that emotional about our career. My career epiphany came that day when I realized that I had to figure out what I was supposed to be doing for a living. And I had to move heaven and earth to be able to do it. I had to stop hiding behind excuse, the excuses that I needed to make a lot of money. I had to stop hiding from being brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous. I needed to come out from behind the bed where I lay curled up, hiding from no one. I needed Fellow Toastmasters, it's time for you to get emotional about your career, to have your very own career epiphany, to stop curling up like that hiding out one, to not be afraid that you are indeed powerful beyond measure, to know that you really can make a huge, huge difference in the world, and the world needs you to make that difference, to know that you can create your own brand of security, and never again rely on the whims of some faceless company who can't be responsible for your livelihood. To stop being that slouching five, too bored to keep your eyes open, but to instead open your eyes wide and figure out what your talents are, what your passions are, where you can make the biggest difference with your life, what your life affirming values are to be proud of how you're spending that 100,000 hours of your life. To be able to say, as Irma Bombeck once said, when I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope I could say, I gave and used everything you gave me. It's time to get that flippant emotional about your life, about your career, it's time to break into song, do a little dance, cry a little every once in a while, and generally feel unbelievably lucky that you get to do this for a living. 
It's time, fellow Toastmasters, to stand up and shine.